Hey everybody, Preston Brin here with our weekly roundup trader user group uh, free uh, update. Uh, this is for the trading week ending February 12th, 2016. What I thought I'd do is uh, let's just take a step back for just a second. I've got the NASDAQ futures, the NASDAQ 100 futures on the screen here. And you can see that, and I've got all my... Um, my uh, price levels and, and, and so forth drawn on the screen here. Let me just clear it up real quick for you. And then let's just take a look at what uh, I'm looking at here. You can see I've got the Fibonacci's on here um, and they run from the lows that we made back in March, 2009, as I just kind of take it out a little bit for you. And I show you where we're sitting here. Now we've come down and just about exactly touched the first uh, key FIB pullback node. Now this is an official FIB node, but I I, I use 0.236. Uh, typically in very strong bull markets or bear markets for that matter, this is a very common um, counter trend uh, movement point. And you can see here on this weekly chart as I take a step back, um, we've come down on the NASDAQ and, and hit it almost perfectly. Um, going all the way back to the March, uh, early March 2009 lows. Now, what's really interesting, even though we finished strong on Friday, um, the NASDAQ was the underperformer uh, for the day on that big bounce back. Actually, the best performer for the day uh, in the index was the Dow. But looking at the NASDAQ, I just want to focus a little bit on this for a second. You can see here we've got a MACD here, but look at the extension here for this week. NASDAQ has given it all up. Now, if you'll recall, if you've been following my weekly updates, going back to the end of 2015, I was talking a lot about the overextension of NASDAQ compared to the other markets. <clears throat> In fact, I talked about just how much further extended to the upside NASDAQ was compared to the Russell. And I had talked about doing a pair trade where you short NASDAQ and go long the Russell. And as I've said many times, the, the, the better trade in hindsight would have been shorting NASDAQ and going along the Dow. But even shorting NASDAQ and going along the Russell would have been good because on a relative basis over the past three weeks, NASDAQ has been the worst performer. Um, and you can see this pullback here. And even though we had that large bounce uh, on Friday, and perhaps it can go a little bit low, uh, higher, I still am projecting a rollback over again. We're still a sell on any rally type environment in this market. And should NASDAQ, and there's a there's this really strong area here, right in this area here, that should NASDAQ take out NASDAQ futures. Um, and you can see here on the chart, it's right at about 36.88 on the NASDAQ 100 futures. Should we take that out? we're going to have a pretty good little rundown um, to the a true FIB level at 38%, and, and that's off the high and the low, going back to 2009. Um, and if, let me just take it in a little bit, and we'll look at a, uh, a closer view of this, just so that you can see where everything is sitting here. So <clears throat> let me just put it on a daily chart here for just one minute. Uh, and if we come into the daily, uh, and we look at this, you can see here um, the, the sequence and the rollover that we've had in NASDAQ. Now, uh, remember, NASDAQ is where a lot of higher risk stocks are, where a lot of higher beta stocks are. And you've probably heard the terminology of FANG with Facebook and Amazon and Netflix and Google and, and stocks like that which have been very strong bullish for a number of years. And, and it seems like a lot of um, buyers or at least a lot of sellers were taking profits and just dumping those stocks left and right, regardless of what their earnings called for. And by the way, they were being punished or being punished this earning season um, uh, because we do not have an artificial stimulant underneath with the feds doing a lot of stimulus. So it used to be Amazon could, um, uh, beat on the bottom line, but miss the top line and still go up. But that's no longer uh, the environment that we're in. If they have a miss anywhere, especially their forward guidance, they're taking a bath. Now, let's look at this daily chart here. Looking at this daily chart, you can see here that we had a low and then a lower low here. And you can see what looks like a bullish divergence here. And, and my members we would call it a bud. So we're looking at a bullish divergence here, which does suggest we're going to have a little bit more of a run up here. 
Um, and I would anticipate this. I mean, I think just about everybody and their uncle is saying it's time for a bounce. And a lot of the professional traders, once we get up into this area here, is probably going to be selling into this bounce. Uh, let's compare this time frame to this time frame back here. You can see on NASDAQ, we actually took out the lows from last August. This, this time frame right here, if you guys will recall, and it happened across all indexes. We had that flash crash to the downside. That was when China did an abrupt devalue of their yuan, over 2%. Uh, on a Sunday night, it just sent the markets really cratering on Monday. Um, and then they quickly bounce back up, but they roll back over again. And you can see from the low down here, um, right around 3,900, right, on the NASDAQ uh, 100. They, they bounced and came all the way back up here to this point here, which was around 4,450, roughly, okay? So... Coming up to this 4450 area, um, you're talking 550 points on the NASDAQ 100 futures. That is a huge move up. And then, of course, people got a little bit lazy, and then the markets, the markets flushed them all back out again before it started another run up here. And then we failed at the highs, and then we rolled back over again. Um, <clears throat> So that means that even down here, even if we run up over 550 points, that could take us back up to this area here around 4,400, okay? So we've got to be careful here. And there is a key pivot high there sitting around 4,300. Again, a psychological barrier. Um, but we could take that out, come back up here, and then I think you're going to see a lot of buyers willing to sell off up into this area here. Okay. And there are a lot of shorts in the market right now, so we're going to get a little bit more of a, a short squeeze. You can see this bud does indicate to me that we're severely oversold, and the selling, the strength of the sell to get us down here is less than the strength of the selling that got us to this first down point here. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm seeing on NASDAQ. Now, in fact, if I were to do this across all indexes, we'll take a look at the Dow, which was the strongest finisher on Friday. And you can see on the Dow here, this green line, let's take it back out to a weekly here just to show you. Um, NASDAQ has not fallen below, but you can see right here, the Dow actually came below that 0.236 area. Again, using the same... Fibonacci pullbacks from the March 2009 lows to the highs made this summer, uh, past summer 2015. You can see we've moved back down here again, um, but we've got a little bit of a bullish divergence on the Dow as well. All right. And if we take it back to a daily chart, you can see here that we've got um, a possible setup for a run up higher. And I could see us running up anywhere from 16 Four, all the way up to about 16.5, 16,500 area, um, maybe slightly higher, and then another possible rollover again. All right, so uh, we got a little bit of a bullish divergence down here setting up. Um, you can see the 2016 low price as I've got it drawn on the screen here at 15,365, which is just north slightly of the 2015 low. Uh, made back in uh, August, August the 24th. So we have not taken that low out. We did on NASDAQ, but we did not on the Dow. Um, so I, I think we're going to, you know, the momentum will probably carry us a little bit, but just be very careful here. Um, and if we look at the um, E-minis, S&P 500 futures, <clears throat> you can see almost the exact same chart. Uh, in fact, we made a lower low here on the 11th, which was Thursday, uh, from the prior low made on the 20th of January. And we've already taken out the August 24th low back in um, 2015. Um, and you can see we've made these lower lows, but now we've set up for a nice little bud uh, here as well on the S&P 500. And you can see the clear pivot point right here. Uh, I'm going to call it 1940 area. Okay. Um, and you can see that we had this nice little move up on Friday. And it'll be choppy, but I would not be surprised to see us come up and challenge this area before we get a little bit top heavy and then sellers step back in and push it down to challenge this area again. Okay. Again, looking at the prior instance when we came down here uh, roughly to about, 
you know, uh, you know, th this low down here, we'll call it, let's call it 1831. Um, and then we moved all the way back up here to this high here, you know, right around um, 2007 area, right? That is a huge move up like that um, uh, last August. I mean, if we were to do the count and then just take and take 2007 and take out of it 1831, you would see that was about a 176 point move in the E-mini. So, and we made lower lows here. So if we were to add, let's just, you know, for the fun of it, we'll add 176 points to it. And we were at 1802. So if we were to add 176 to 1802, just doing some symmetry, um, it would take us right back up into this area right here right around, we'll just call it, uh, we'll round it up to 1980. It's 100, 1978, but we'll call it 1980. And if I were to extend that line over, you will see that that is a, a solid resistance point or a support point, depending on the nature of the direction. So I would not be surprised. There are a lot of sellers waiting up in this area up here. So if we move it back up here, the minute we get a rollover on a daily chart, I'm going to be more apt to be selling the markets rather than buying the markets on a dip. All right, so that's kind of where we're sitting. Now, the index that is just really in the small cap and mid cap uh, have underperformed um, individually, separately, uh, very poorly. Here is the, uh, the Russell. Now, I've got the highs up here on this little chart marked right around 19, 1293, and you can see the lows here. It's over 26%. We're in a bear market on the Russell, the small cap stocks. We're in a bear market, and you can see this move down here. But again, we've set up for a bullish um, divergence here. You can see, um, similar to August, uh, last August, we came down and we, we you know, pretty much didn't really make lower lows, but we were very close to it. But you could see that bullish divergence that was set up there. And we got a nice run to the upside before we roll back over again. Well, now we got a low and a much lower low here. We got that bullish divergence. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us come back up and challenge this 1068 area, maybe a little bit higher, which is now also support for the prior August. And then um, I think the sellers will come back in. Now, that's what the charts are saying right now. So on a, day, on a daily time basis, we are in a sell a rally mode. Um, but I think we still got a little bit of a ways to go before you're going to see sellers willing to jump back in again. And I think it's going to run kind of quick. We'll have these spikes both up and down. Now, as a reaction to this market, clearly we've seen other markets um, act pretty funny. Um, in, in relation to that. If we look at the bond market, you'll see the bonds fell hard on Friday. We came right up to the, the target I had in bonds as I was showing our members at 170 and 20 ticks. Right up to that point, I mean almost to the T, because I'd called it about 170.25, uh, and we came up and we hit 170.26. Um, and then right at this level here, I was suggesting selling some calls above this level for a quick pullback. I'm not suggesting that bonds um, are going to come back down, you know, in this area again, right down here. Uh, I'm suggesting we're going to get a little bit of a pullback, find support, and then make another run of it again. When we make that run there is when the markets are rolling back over again. These high bonds are not good for the financial market because that means interest rates are very low. And that tends to damage the financial markets, which have really been damaged this year um, as we go into uh, the, the middle of, of, of the month of February here. So we've had some good trades in the bond market. Uh, we put one on. It didn't last more than three or four days. Uh, and that's kind of where I'm seeing right here. Now, if we look at the interest rates, let's look at the 10-year rate. Um, it's down uh, right here. Look at this. I mean, it was just phenomenal. The 10-year the rate actually gapped down to about 156, and then on Friday, you can see the big bounce back up, okay? Uh, and again, this is, this is a daily chart, but you can see the move back up. But this is clearly a situation where I think the rates are going to go lower, which suggests to me that the markets are going to go lower, short of any short-term bounce that we get. So you, 
guys, you got to be very careful. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into junk bonds and high yield corporate bonds, those kind of things, uh, and the yield spread. But all of them suggest the markets are are um, just very uh, fearful over the next uh, 120 days with this market. Um, <clears throat> for our members, we'll spend some time going over it. Now, as a reminder, um, this Monday is a holiday for U.S. equities. It's President's Day. Uh, futures will trade Sunday night and then have a limited day Monday, but the volume is going to be very low. For all of our Asian Pacific uh, members and um, our European in Latin American markets, they will be open. Um, China will be coming back from a long one week off lunar holiday for their New Year's. I'd love to take a week off for New Year's, but um, they celebrate their New Year's. They will be coming back, so they got a lot of ground to catch up. They'll probably sell off big time Sunday night going into uh, their first trading day on Monday. Also, if we look at the gold market, now we've traded gold successfully this year and look at what this did in fact I've got to move my new highs up here for gold the high for gold this year is 1263.90 you can see where we started the year off right down here around 1061 so we've moved about 200 points in about a six week period uh, in gold um, <clears throat> now I do believe we're going to see a little bit of weakness in gold before it moves higher again I think it can move higher uh, and obviously, if we get that move up, if we get that bounce up in um, uh, equities and then a rollover, you will see a pullback in gold and then a move back higher again. Um, and I think gold has a has a, a, a good chance. It's going to be choppy, but a good chance to move back up over 1350 into the 1400 area. Uh, we got minor pivot points along the way that it's got to take out prior pivot highs but I do believe that's a good opportunity here so selling puts underneath gold uh, doing vertical uh, um, debit spreads uh, with calls in the money debit spreads also makes sense um, the, the the lowest risk uh, trade would be selling puts underneath the uh, gold futures also gold miners uh, GDX they seem to be performing very well. You can see this. They've cleared this hurdle here. They may come back and test it, but they got a number of pivot highs that they're going to be uh, challenging. So I think over the first 90 days, you'll see GDX perform very well. Now, a lot of you probably know, at least my members know, that I've been trading silver longer term. Um, you can see this, this price down here, and you can see since um, the beginning of January, let's put it on a daily chart, you can see silver um, has just really taken off um, and I've been accumulating SLV this is SLV right here um, again we'll probably have a little bit of a pullback but I think this is going to run higher as well um, so we've had a lot of fun with this now a really interesting trade and a really interesting market is oil right now inventory levels suck I mean they're just very very high but you know you got to pay attention to price action now I know there's rumors out there that non-OPEC and OPEC countries are going to come together and they're going to kind of slow down their um, production which would drain the swamp if you will of this excess oil inventory but even if they do that there's going to be a psychological bump higher but you can see this classic classic uh, bullish divergence starting to set up in the MACD from a low and a lower low uh, in fact I had called the mid 20s and we got down to 2619 um, and then when we started that next wave down again I had called down to 24 now we are getting these rumors which is moving it back up but I think it's going to kind of run out of energy if it gets into the low 30s and I think it's going to roll back over again because the fundamentals are going to take hold the only thing that's going to keep oil up right now is if those rumors turn out to be true and then I think you'll see oil come back up into the mid to upper 30s and that's about where it's going to stay because the other side of this coin is if they drive oil prices up that's also going to help the fracking and shale revolution in the US which is now in the driver's seat as far as controlling the oil production quotas globally and they're going to force the um, OPEC members to have to start pumping more otherwise they're going to lose market share which was the original reason why their original stated reason why they wanted to um, continue to pump so this is kind of what we're looking at here I'm seeing a little bit of a bounce here now this is also 
going to help the equity market. So we get this bounce up, it helps the equity market. Then if it rolls back over, it's going to be timed with the equity market because these two are highly correlated right now. I've worked with our members to, to, to show you just how we can trade both of these um, charts here. Really interesting how they work. Um, so this is kind of what I'm looking at in the energy market. Now, there's a lot of other markets that are that are moving very nicely. Uh, with with some of the things that we're doing here if I show you volatility for a minute um, and this is a daily chart of volatility notice on this daily chart I've got these colors in zone and 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 by the way our strategies change as we move from zone one to two to three to four to five zone five is more of a black swan event kind of thing which we did tap last August 24th we came in and you can see that huge this is a daily bar uh, where we spiked up to 53.29 and then we rolled right back over again. But you can see we're still in zone three, even with that big up move uh, that we had on Friday. Uh, you can still see that that volatility is still working its way up with minor small moves and then bigger moves up like that. Minor small moves and then bigger move up like that. So, you know, we're, we're still very susceptible. Uh, and should we get a bounce higher, um, you're going to see that <clears throat> um, uh, volatility may come down, but it may stay in zone three for a while. This is, you know, these zones right here are made for premium option sellers. I mean, they're just, they're great markets for that. And for our members, you know, we've already been putting on some trades. I've talked about many of them in our chat room that, that um, you know, some of you have been in and out of in just three or four days and have done very well. Uh, so congrats to you. We've got a lot more to come. All right, everybody, I wanted to just give you guys a quick update. The equity markets are going to be open Tuesday morning. Um, I would expect this momentum to carry over just a little bit. Um, but again, any rally at this point in time on the daily chart, I'm going to look at calling selling any rally. Now, um, if the if the daily price action changes, um, then I will I will also call that out as well. You know, one thing, I mean, all the charts to me are showing that we're going to go lower. Of course, that does not mean that's what's going to happen, but that's what the charts are pointing out. Um, and if you look at this volume <clears throat> right here, this is volume of the E-mini futures. And, and I'll just show this and I'll, I'll, I'll end the session. You can see this huge down move right here. Right. And as we got lower and lower, you can see volume just going way up here and you can see uh, the high level of volume. Now you can see these lines down here, just like the charts up here. I use EMA crossovers. I use a five and a 20 crossover on my volume. So when the five goes below the 20 the volume is a lot less over the prior month on average and then when it starts coming back up like it did right about here and it moves up and and you know when you see higher volume on down moves that's not good you know and <clears throat> then look at this up move right here that we had that up move right there look at the volume the five was below the 20 so that does not tell me a lot of conviction and that means the minute we roll back over volume is going to pick back up again, which is what we've got. So one of the other things you want to be looking at is how is the volume on the upside and how is the volume on the downside? Is there conviction or not? And, you know, when you get a move like this right here where the volume is, you know, in my case, the five below the 20 EMA of the, of the rolling volume or the rolling um, uh, averages of volume and it's below average, there is no conviction in that up move. Um, and now we got a bullish diversion, so we could get a higher move up here, but I am still expecting a rollback over again. Okay, that's what, uh, and, and then for our members, if it changes, I will, you'll, be, you'll be the first to know because I'll put it in our, in our chat room. All right, everybody, have a great holiday weekend. If you're a North American member for our Asian American, Latin American, Canadian, and European members, um, I guess you'll be uh, trading uh, on Monday, Sunday night. We're taking a holiday night, so we won't do our weekly market watch for our members. I will see you for our Tuesday morning session, 7.30 New York City time. If you're not a member of our group, I highly encourage you to come in and check us out. Uh, this year promises to be as good, if not a better year for us, than 2015. Have a great weekend and a holiday, everybody. Bye-bye now.